What do real criminals say about how they target their victims? And how many would try to take your gun away if you're defending yourself? In this video, we have some shocking answers to reveal to you. But first, let me remind you we have a gun giveaway going on right now. You can enter for free, but it ends really soon. So click the link in the description below to reveal which brand new gun you could win. We did a survey here at Concealed Carry Magazine asking convicted criminals, guys who are actually still in prison, about how they chose their victims and whether or not they would try to take their firearms away if someone tried to defend themselves. It's a simple one-page survey. They got to write their answers on the back and we went forward with them. So here's question number one. Which of the following behaviors or attributes would make you more likely to target a victim? And then it lists 23 specific behaviors ranging from wearing earbud headphones to walking with a cane. The four behaviors or attributes marked by more than 50% of the respondents seem to indicate an appealing target and the right opportunity. The person is alone. The person is wearing an expensive watch. The person is walking on a dark street and the person is flashing cash. So don't flash your cash. 37% of the respondents selected the person is a man. This tracked with several write-in answers, including the person is involved in illegal activity, the person has disrespected me, the person had taken something of value from me or a loved one. The behaviors least selected by the respondents, only 11% of them or less, included the person is elderly, the person is a child, or the person has a child with them. The person is walking very quickly, the person makes eye contact with me, or the person has a cane. Some of the more popular write-in answers included the person is a known drug dealer, the person is known for having money, the person is using an ATM machine, or the person is, looks scared and is maybe non-combative. So the takeaway tracks with the famous advice from trainer John Farnham, don't do stupid things in stupid places with stupid people. Question number two asks, which of the following scenarios would most likely cause you to end your robbery attempt? And it goes on to list eight separate scenarios. These range from the person you are robbing has a gun to the person you are robbing calls 911. The most popular selection by far, 62% said if the person they were robbing had a gun, they would stop their robbery attempt. The next most common selections between 40 and 50% included the person you are robbing screams or yells, the person you are robbing calls 911, and other. Some of the more popular write-in answers included potential witnesses show up, police arrive on the scene, there is bystander involvement, and the victim appears to be trained and is able to fight back. In one of the more interesting write-in answers, the respondent indicated that he'd break off an attack if his victim has a heart attack, stroke, or seizure. So maybe you want to fake a heart attack in the middle of a robbery, I don't know. The takeaway here is that muggers clearly prefer unarmed or untrained victims, and muggers are loath to draw a crowd or encounter the police. Question three asks, if you decide to rob someone on the street, are you more concerned about getting caught by the police or getting shot by your intended victim? The respondents were asked to circle one of the two options. 65% of the respondents said they were more worried about getting caught, while 27% indicated that they were more worried about being shot by the victim. Questions four and five ask, if a man or woman, respectively, you are trying to rob, pulls a gun to defend himself or herself, do you believe he or she will use it. Interestingly, 75% of the respondents circled yes for both men and women. And one responded, put it this way, I can tell how a person handles a firearm if he or she is trained. Questions number six and seven ask, would you try to disarm a man or woman, respectively, who pulls a gun on you in self-defense? 57% of the respondents said yes, they would try to disarm a man. A slightly smaller number of the respondents, 54%, said yes, they would try to disarm a woman. Question number eight asks, have you ever taken a gun away from someone who was trying to defend himself or herself as you tried to rob that person? 41% of the respondents said yes, they were able to take that gun away from someone who is trying to defend themselves with it. So think about weapons retention, folks. 41% were able to take a gun away. Question nine asks, during a robbery attempt, would you be willing to kill or injure your victim if he or she does not comply? Nearly half the respondents, 47% said yes, they would be willing to kill or injure the victim. One respondent described his mindset with the following, if I feel like robbing someone, there's no turning back. So the takeaway from the first nine questions is that if you have a gun, you must be prepared to use it and be trained to use it. And you must take proper measures to avoid being disarmed by your assailant. Weapons retention 
is key. Question number 10 asks, what's the one thing that makes someone more attractive for a mugging? And we left a blank space for people to write in an answer. One of the write-in selections was, the person is a shit talker or has a bad attitude. Another one was, the person has luggage or is waiting for a taxi. Another person wanted to rob people who were cashing in chips at a casino. That's a very specific operation. And another answer said, the person is white or Caucasian. By far the most popular response, as the same in question one, was wearing expensive clothing, flashing cash or other valuables, or being alone. Question 11 asked, what is the number one deterrent that would make you avoid mugging a person? One respondent said, if they make me believe it's gonna be too much work. Some of the more popular write-in answers to that question was, the person exudes confidence, the person obviously has a gun, the person has an aggressive looking dog, the person appears to be military, the person is with other people, the person is elderly, a woman or a child, the person is near a police station, the person looks like he or she has nothing, and there's no clear path of escape. So understand that, Muggers are already thinking about how they're going to get out of there after the mugging. Remember, we don't know if the respondents took the time to answer truthfully or if they just circled or scribbled down nonsense answers to kill time while they were in jail. But these are big takeaways. 57% said yes, they would try to disarm a man or woman who pulls a gun in self-defense. So understand that your gun in and of itself is not going to protect you. You need to be trained and have the mindset to use it and make sure that you know how to defend that firearm. Weapons retention is so important because people will try to take your gun. 41% people said yes, they have taken a gun away from someone who was trying to defend himself with that gun. So think about this, especially people who consider open carry, criminals are not all that afraid of your gun. Some people said yes, if it's obvious a person has a gun that they're not going to try to rob them. But in the middle of a robbery, the criminal is going to try to take your firearm. So you need to make sure that you establish distance and you understand that someone's coming to take your gun, you know how you can keep your gun. Again, I've said this three times in this video, weapons retention is key. 47% of the people said yes to the question, during a robbery attempt, would you be willing to kill or injure your intended victim? Folks, understand this. If you're involved in a robbery, if people are coming to rob you, and they say they're going to hurt you, even if they don't say, even if they indicate in any way that they're going to hurt you or kill you, believe them. Understand that this is a very serious situation and you have to have the mindset that you are going to fight and not give up. Robbers don't like it when you fight back. It becomes too much work. They're worried about getting hurt. This is serious. You have to take it seriously and have the mindset that you will not be a victim. Want to know when it's legal to draw your gun? Click the video right next to me to reveal a detailed explanation from a former police officer and competitive shooter. Let me give you a definition of lethal force. Lethal force is any force that would cause death or great bodily harm.